Get ready, America, for this is the best of Destination Small Town, a Quack TV production featuring the shows that have taken Sweet Swine County by storm. The reality hit, The Real Housewives of Sweet Swine County, Sweet Swine's favorite music show, Backstage at the Commune, the tastefully done cooking segment, Cooking It Up with Betty, the always zany soap opera, As the Corn Grows, and of course, the wildly popular talk shows that share what's happening inside and outside Sweet Swine County. Which shows will you be seeing today? Stay tuned and find out right after the break. This program has been made possible by Purdue University, Sweet Swine County's Institute of Higher Learning, with three classroom trailers that can accommodate up to nine students each. To learn more, visit SweetSwineScoop.com. Abby Appetite here, head reporter for the What's Cooking team, making a list for my reporters to do stories on about the restaurants, cafes, diners, supper clubs, and bakeries in the small towns of the Midwest. You can see them all on clucktv.com. Hey, let's pick one out and go there together. Remember, you'll be traveling with an appetite. Abby Appetite. This program is made possible in part by Swine Tales Publications, the proud publisher of Sweet Swine County Maps and Plat Books, now publishing authors from throughout Sweet Swine County. Swine Tales Publication is now making plans for their next book tour, and they may be held in these small towns with the release of The Sweet Swine Diaries, a collection of unauthorized biographies by Cassidy Davis, featuring a riveting collection of the exotic, neurotic, chaotic, and even psychotic stories about the lives of the Sweet Swine County ladies. Miss Davis is quoted as saying, I have never seen so many single women with so many problems in my life. Enjoy. Each of these towns and their businesses are being considered to hold a book signing because of the information found on the best source about small towns of the Midwest. To learn about these towns and their businesses, visit DestinationSmallTown.com. The lifestyles led in the small towns and counties of the Midwest are like no other, but we seldom hear about the points of interest and businesses located in these towns. While there's one TV station that's made it their mission to make sure the stories of the small towns of the Midwest are told, Cluck TV. That's right, Cluck TV, located in the neighboring county of Sweet Swine. See all the towns that are covered on KLUKTV.com. of As the Corn Grows. Today, we join Miss Minnie as she and Cousin John meet with lawyers regarding her mother's will. Welcome to Alabama, Miss Olson. I trust you had a safe trip here. I am Abraham Neister. I am the senior partner at Hedge Your Bets Law Office. And this is my fine associate, Clemson Ride. I'm so glad to meet your acquaintance. And this is my fiance, John Robert Olson. Welcome, sir. And may I just say that you are one lucky man, indeed. <laughs> well, I'm sure you're all anxious to get down to business. So shall we review the details? Sadly to say, your mother died of a bout of pneumonia last October. Well, why did it take so long to notify me? Well, your mother was very confused in the last days of her life, and she was non-specific of your whereabouts. It took our investigative team six months to locate y'all, since we didn't have a name, a social security number, or a city or a state. Oh, for crying out loud, that woman abandoned her in Sweet Swine County when she was eight years old. You trying to tell me she neglected to tell you that? 
Well, as I said, Sophia was very confused and secretive about the details of her past. Details? I'm not some insignificant detail. I'm her daughter. Calm, calm down now. Seems to me like we've gotten off to a little rocky start here. I fully apologize for not notifying you as quickly as we should have. And it wasn't until you all sent us that certified document releasing your claim to your mother's estate that we were able to locate y'all. Release? What, what release? I have a document right here. Miss Mayberry, the document, please. Oh, Miss Minnie, is this here your signature? Well, it, it appears to be, but I don't remember signing it. Miss Mayberry, the envelope, please. As y'all can see, it's postmarked Split Hoof, Sweet Swine County. Hey, what gives here? You know, I don't know what kind of shenanigans you two yahoos are trying to pull here. You know, if, if she says she didn't sign a thing, she didn't sign it. Are you calling her a liar? No, please calm down, sir. We were confused as much as you guys seem to be. And when we got a hold of your half-sister, she was very surprised that you were going to waiver your rights to a sizable amount of inheritance. Look, I didn't know about any of this. I didn't know anything about where my mother was. I didn't know anything about her dying. I didn't know anything about a will. And I certainly didn't know anything about a half-sister. Oh, Johnny. Oh, now look what you've done. Listen, if she said she didn't sign that, she didn't sign it. Obviously, somebody forged her name. As y'all can see, the signature was notarized by a Miss Chapel at the It Will Be Gone Savings and Loan in Split Hoof. Miss Chapel? At your bank? How did that happen? <laughs> I don't know, but I swear I'm going to find out. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to make a phone call. I'll be right back. I do apologize for any confusion, but since your mother left a sizable inheritance, we have to make sure we go everything over everything thoroughly and verify everything very carefully. And you all mentioned you didn't know your whereabouts of your mother. That's right, and I haven't heard from my mother since I was eight years old. Listen, I just got off the phone with Mary Ann, your Miss Chapel. She seems to remember this incident really, really specifically. Uh, you came in one day with a dark hat and a veil on with uh, Daniel, my brother, and he said that you had laryngitis and he needed you to, uh, to, uh, to notarize this statement. I don't remember any of this. Johnny, where were you? Yeah, I was in a coma, remember? Anyway, Mary Ann said since it was already signed that she couldn't notarize it because she didn't witness the signature. Oh, you started crying hysterically and Daniel insisted, so she just relented and went ahead and, and notarized it. But I wasn't even there! You know, I believe you, Minnie. Say, what, what does this Annie person look like anyway? Well, I'll tell you, you both have your mother's good looks. And I would really think you were twins, not half-sisters, except your sister Annie is 10 years younger than you. Hey, listen. Minnie will sign a document testifying that this document right here is a forgery. And it was done to cheat her out of her rightful inheritance. And she demands, demands, that the, ter the original terms of her mother's will be carried out right now. And that's why... We contact you all directly. We'll have the paperwork drawn up at, for you all by 3 p.m. today. Now, it's going to take some time to get all the stocks and bonds together. But tomorrow, we can have cash assets available to you. And them cash assets are about $95 million. $95 million? $95 million? Minus commission. I'm here to see Elmer Plow. Do you have an appointment? Yes, uh, I believe it's at one o'clock. All right. Well, just let me. See, well, let me see if he's in. Uh, but but I can I can see him. Shh. Mr. Plow, are you in? Is this thing working? Take your finger off the button. Sorry. Do you have an appointment with a Mr. Silo, Earl Silo.
Mr. Silo, Earl Silo. Take your finger off the button! Yes, yes I do, please send him in. You can go in. Thank you. Come in, Earl, have a seat. Why, thank you, Mr. Plow. What can I help you with today, Earl? Well? Well is a very deep subject. What? Earl, you never start a sentence with well. It makes you look weak. And we don't want to be weak now, do we, Earl? Well, er, I mean, no. No, we don't. Let me ask you something. How long have you worked for Cousin John? I suppose maybe 10 years. And do you like working for Cousin John? Well, I, I guess so. You guess? Is this your dream job? Do you wake up every morning, Earl, and say to yourself, Self, I can't wait to get up today and play second banana to this overgrown chicken farmer, Cousin John. Well, I mean, no. No, of course you don't, Earl. You have dreams. I do? I mean, I do. Yes, you do. I want you to take this piece of paper, and I want you to write down on here your dreams your desires, and your aspirations. Dreams? Just right. You know, Earl, everyone has dreams. But unless you act on those dreams, you end up wasting away in a dead-end job. You need the Elmer Plow five-step program. And you know what we call that program? What? what? Plowing through life. Do you think you can handle plowing through life, Earl? Yes. Not yes. well, but yes. Good. Yes. That's a good answer. Let's see what you got here. Hmm. Mayor of Split Hoof. I didn't know you wanted to be mayor of Split Hoof, Earl. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess. Oh, 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 oh. I just never Wait. thought anybody would vote okay, for stop. me. Stop all this guessing. But, but Maynard Hayfield's been the mayor of Split Hoof for like 20 years. H how can I compete with that? An even better reason to run for mayor. Hayfield's due for an upset, Earl. 20 years of ho-hum politics, it's just ripe for the picking. You can be a fresh, new driving force in politics around this area for years to come, Earl. I can? Earl, you follow my five-step program, plowing through life, and I can almost guarantee you'll probably be able to potentially run for President of the United States by 2020. President Earl Silo! How does that sound? I like it! Yes! President? Really? But in, in 2020? Will Elmer's miraculous five-step program turn lovable Earl Silo into the next mayor of Split Hoof? I guess we'll find out after the break. Get ready, because just when you thought you'd gotten the cockleburs out of your overalls, they're now on TV. That's right, this is one weed you won't want to pull. The Cockleburr Morning Show, with hosts who deliver a mix of news, entertainment, and information about the communities throughout our story country. Now on this station and the web. This program has been made possible by SweetSwineScoop.com, the online magazine that keeps Sweet Swine County citizens informed on what's happening. For if it happens in Sweet Swine County, it's news to us. Who are these people and what are they doing? Well, they're talk show hosts, tourists, celebrities, and reporters from your neighboring county of Sweet Swine. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County, and they're sharing what they've learned about the businesses and points of interest in the small towns of the Midwest. Learn all that they learned on DestinationSmallTown.com. Welcome back to As the Corn Grows! Now, welcome back to another exciting episode of As the Corn Grows! Today, we join Miss Minnie as she and the ladies of Sweet Swine shower the bride-to-be with gifts and marital advice. Oh, Miss Minnie, I thought you were going to miss your own bridal shower. Oh, I'm so sorry. I had to fly to Alabama. It was all so unexpected and sudden. Is everything all right? Well, 
Lawyer Ed called me and he informed me that my mother had died. <gasps> Your mother? Oh, you poor thing. And, and with the wedding right around the corner. Oh, you must be devastated. She, she passed last October. And they just contacted you now? Oh, Minnie, that must have been horrible. Oh, oh. it's all right. I, I really don't want to talk about that now. After all, this is a party, right? Yes, let's all get started. And please have your seats. I can't believe Daisy May wasn't on the guest list. Who did that? Norma, did you do the guest list? Mm -hmm. I can't well, believe she wasn't here. Didn't you hear? Hear? Hear what? She's in the hospital. <gasps> The hospital? My sister's in the hospital? What's the matter? What happened to she her? She went into labor last night. Really? Oh, la labor? Daisy May is pregnant? It has been the last nine months. <laughs> oh, well, I come to think of it, she was packing on a few pounds. Did you guys notice that? I'm like, I'm the baby now. I can't believe I didn't think about that. Well, who's the father? Does anybody know who the father is? Well, we think it's that Garrett Dawson singer. <gasps> oh. And you know, he's on a 40 city um, concert tour now. And he has been gone for eight months. She says they'll get married as soon as he gets back. If he gets back. Prairie Ann, let's get back to this bridal event. Oh, whatever. Fine then. As Miss Minnie's maid of honor, I would like to welcome you all to this fine event. Okay, pipe down everybody and go ahead and have yourselves a seat. You know, Earl, I gotta give it to you. You put this thing all together yourself. You know, I kind of just halfway expected a bag of chips and a six pack of beer and that was about it. Well, you know, I was gonna do that, but Miss Clarice, she took me out to this here spot on the interweb and there was the Martha Stewart party planning. It had everything you needed for the perfect bachelor party. Martha Stewart? Oh, yeah. So anyway, I got a hold of Miss Wilma and she gave me the keys to your cabin and, and here we are. You know, Earl, I'm going to need that key back. Oh, yeah, sure thing, boss. Now, go ahead and have yourself a seat. All right. Hey, boys. Nice, nice party. As Cousin John's best man, I want to thank you all for coming to this here bachelor party today. There's a beer over there on the back bar and there's some sandwiches over in the fridge. So where you been, John? You and the bride-to-be have been gone for over a week. Word is, you two ran off and got eloped. No, 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 old Minnie, she's got her heart set on a big old country wedding. Uh, no, we had to fly down to Alabama and help uh, settle her mother's estate. Uh, her mother passed away? I, I didn't know that. But neither did Minnie. You know, her mother ran off with the Fuller Brush salesman when Minnie was only eight. Heck, lawyer Ed called us uh, just a couple weeks ago and told us her mother passed away in, back in October. I heard a rumor that Miss Minnie's mother uh, married some rich tycoon uh, down south and that Miss Minnie was due for a sizable inheritance. Uh, so where did you hear that? Norma, down at Edie's. Oh, that nosy Norma. Oh no, Cousin John, don't get your knickers in a knot here. This is your last night of freedom and it's time to hoop it up, but well, time's a wasting. Go fish. Oh, Norma, I've, I've never seen anything quite like this. When I saw it, I knew you would love it. Oh, I do. I'll make sure and find a special place for it in my new home. New home? Are you building a new home? Oh, yes, we are. Um, seems like I inherited a little something from my mother. So John and I are gonna build a new home overlooking Aunt Ella's farm. Well, you mean Daisy May's farm, don't you? Oh yes, of course that's what I meant. Thank you so much for reminding me of that. Well, I heard you came into a little bit more than a little something. I heard you inherited millions. Norma, let's get back to the party. Uh, uh, millions? Really? Well, all right. You're going to find out anyway. Seems like my mother married a very wealthy oil tycoon, and his fortune, when he died, went to my mother and my half-sister Annie. And then when mother passed away, I inherited everything. Sister? I didn't know you had a sister. A half-sister. I tell you, I was flabbergasted to find that out after all these years. So, what does she look like? I have no idea. 
I don't want to know, and I don't intend to meet her. You know, her lawyers say that we could be twins, so she must be very good looking. Hey, Earl. You know, this isn't a stag film. It's some instructional video on how to hunt deer. Well, yeah, it was either that or one about how to have fun at a party when you go stag. And, well, since you're getting married, I didn't figure there'd be any point in that. Me too. I kind of liked it. You would. I was thinking you'd come up with something a little bit more, uh, you know, X-rated. Well, you know, I had a hold of one, but, well, Miss Clarice, she made me put it back. She said it would set the wrong tone. So, uh, when did the strippers get here? Strippers? Earl, tell us you hired strippers. Well, there wasn't anything on Martha's list about strippers. So, let me get this right, Earl. We got no dirty movies, we got no strippers, and we're running short on booze and food. That Martha. There's been no help at all. I have got to be the worst best man bachelor party planner ever. Well, I suppose every one of you are wondering where Miss Minnie's future mother-in-law is. You know, I suppose she's miffed because Betty Thompson is going to be catering the wedding. Well, she is, but she had a mishap. A mishap? Is she going to be okay? Oh, she'll be fine as new come the wedding. I have set up a little webcam so she can tell you the secrets to a happy marriage. Oh. Yoo-hoo, Miss Swanson! Are you in there? Yes, I'm here. Minnie, girls, I'm here today because of your impending marriage to my son. I have a few words of wisdom that have served me well. Number one, don't sleep with the Russian. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Nothing. Oh, nothing, Mrs. Swanson. Go ahead, continue, dear. Rule number five, do not ask your husband to do anything before he has eaten. Oh, you've got that one right. I've asked Henry to take out the garbage one night, and it was before supper. He got up, walked over to the trash, pulled out that bag, and splash, put everything on the kitchen floor. Well, that's a man. Rule four, never talk to your husband before he has his morning coffee. That is so true. My Marvin grumbles and growls at me if I so much as look at him before he has his morning cup of tea. <laughs> Minnie, Minnie, are you writing this down? Somebody give her a paper and pencil. Rule number three, always make him think that your good ideas are his. Hey, you know that makes sense. You know, Johnny always wants to take credit for everything. Mm. Well, let him. Let him get his way. He'll be none the wiser, and you'll get what you want as well. <laughs> that is so true. Number two, never go to bed angry because you will have a sleepless night and the next day will be absolutely worthless. Do you mind if I put the top five on my blog? Knock yourself out, Norma. Now listen, are you ready for the number one idea for a happy marriage? Yes. What is it? I can't wait. Oh, tell us. Yes. Let's yes. have it. The number one secret to a happy marriage is accept your man, flaws and all. And so Remember <laughs> that he will oh. never put the toilet seat down because he can't remember. That's he amazing. will That's never amazing. change the toilet paper roll because it's just too complicated. And, so true. and he will <laughs> never pick his socks up off the floor because it will involve bending over. That's, that's it? Hey, listen, Earl. Stop beating yourself up. What do you say we just finish our poker game and we'll call it a night? Okay, well, but there's one more thing we have to do. Oh, gee, let me guess. We're gonna bob for apples? Oh, no. Mrs. Swanson's here. What? Where? Well, she's not here here. 
So actually, she's got one of those interweb cameras, and she wanted to come to you and present you the top five things that you need to know for a happy marriage. And I've got it all hooked up right here so it could play on this here TV. Uh, now, let me get this straight. So we got no dirty movie. We got no strippers. And you've somehow arranged for my mother to come in and further put a damper on our evening. Well, you know, I told her you wouldn't be too excited about the idea, but she insisted. Oh, for heaven's sake, let's just get this over with. Okay. Hello, John. Boys. Hi, Mother. Hi, Mrs. Swanson. Hi, Mrs. Swanson. You listen up, boys, because this is the best lessons for a happy marriage that you're ever gonna get from a woman. Oh, you got that right. What was that, John? Oh, nothing. Continue. Secret number five, when your wife asks you, and she will, does this dress make me look fat? You say, absolutely not. Why do women always ask that? Hush, Earl. Number four, never let your wife see you looking at another woman. Well, she's got that right. My girlfriend nearly took my head off when I was Checking out that cute little waitress down at Edie's. Oh, yeah. Life's lessons learned. Now this would be secret number three. When she says, well, I'd, I'd like to spend some quality time with you, instead of going to the monster truck rally the third weekend in a row, you say, oh, I was just going to say that. But but we really love our monster truck rally. Do you love them more than you hate sleeping on the couch for a whole week, Earl? I think not. Uh, now, where was I? Oh, uh, secret number two. Always, always compliment your wife on her new hairdo, a new dress, or new shoes, because women love compliments on how they look. Yeah, yeah, but what if we don't notice? Then you will be in the doghouse, mister. Listen, John, secret number one to a happy marriage. Pay more attention to your wife's wants and needs than your own. Because remember, happy wife, happy life. And that, gentlemen, is the secret to a happy marriage. Wow, 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 what a night to remember. Will Earl be better at holding the rings than he was at planning the bachelor party? Will Mrs. Swanson write a new book, Secrets to a Happy Marriage? Will Cousin John remember any of this after surviving his madcap bachelor party? Find out next time on As the Corn Grows! Get ready, because now you can watch a full of fun daytime talk show that shares the latest and greatest news about the people, places, and events found all over our story country. The Women of Sweet Swine County, hosted by three sassy ladies that tell small town stories with big town attitude. Now, on this station and the web. Get ready for a website like no other. A website where you will find stories done by reporters, tourists, and celebrities from Sweet Swine County. Yes, I said Sweet Swine County. With nothing happening in their county, they decided to do some stories about the businesses and points of interest located in their neighboring towns and counties. Take a unique look at life inside the small towns of the Midwest by visiting DestinationSmallTown.com. Get ready, because now you can see a late-night talk show filmed in front of a discerning yet agreeable studio audience. Split hoof tonight! Cousin John and his incomparable sidekick, Earl Silo, interview a roster of guests who make appearances that you won't want to miss. Now on this station and the web.